I piss off so many people when I say that this is the best bike in the world. I just piss off so many people and it's not necessarily intentional. And here's why. It's actually, I have a very, very good reason. And I gotta really uh, apologize for those people that um, I get offended in every video. So why is this an awesome bike and the other ones suck? Well, it happened to me in Arizona when I went and tried to ride other people's bikes. Now, first of all, I'm more in tune to a four-stroke motor, but I'm, I've tried this like $13,000 brand new Husqvarna with super mega suspension, written by a uh, C-class champion that wants to be a B-class champion in Arizona. So uh, it was supposed to be like the best of the best with the best of the best stuff on it, right? Or at least really up there. Like the guy really put some money in it and, and thinking. And the guy was really, really cool to let me ride it. And I could only make it about five feet and I turned around. <laughs> let me see real quick. Can't ride it. Uh -huh. It's too low. <laughs> it's too low, and I'm dragging my foot on your rear brake. That's why I stalled it over here. Uh, you know, people just looked at me. I'm like some kind of like a dick. And I was not trying to be a dick. What What happened is that on this bike, and I found out only when I tried that bike, and it was just a little bit of a different bike later on. And this bike, I modified so much to my riding style and my riding position. Like I could stand right now. I am 6'2", and I could stand just a tiny little bit bent and watch forward and still be comfortable. My knees are just a tiny bit uh, bent. Where on that bike, the handlebars were not raised, they were not moved forward, they were not, they were like in a weird position, which I assume is the stock position, which is, I guess, good, but I'm not used to it. So I got on the bike and all of a sudden I'm like this. And I'm looking at the fender and I can't move my head high enough to compensate for being able to see. My foot is dragging on the rear brake because the brake lever is too high because my boots are different. And all of a sudden I realized that I just drive this bike because I won't be able to give up a, a proper test to it. The bike was not fitting me. It's like trying to get into a small car that you can't clutch. So I, I got on, 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 the, on the Husqvarna 300 and then I got on the KTM 300 which was a little bit taller so I could feel it but then it was still a two-stroke. Which one is this one? It's a 
Holy crap! Yeah, I can't put my foot under your, your shifter. I don't know how you shift. I have to pick my foot off the pegs and then shift. And then I got on a, a four stroke. Oh, it starts nice. 350. Wow, these brakes are sharp. Man, this feels like, if you would not tell me it's a 350, I would think it's a 400, 450. It has too much power. Way too much power. Much, 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 much better. Mostly because, you know, it was a four-stroke and I'm just so used to being a four-stroke. So, uh, that was, that was quite awesome. Uh, I just like four-strokes, but it was not like amazing better or it's just, you know, it's just a typical KTM. Um, I, I would totally ride it. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, this is my favorite bike in the world, but if Trump decides to ban this motorcycle, make America great again over Japanese bikes, and only European, um, then uh, I will uh, switch to uh, obviously a KTM at that point, right? Most likely. But the question is that it's a toss, it's a 50-50 toss. Will I go on a 350 or will I go on a two-stroke? Like I like them both, they're both KTM, they're both kind of like the same bike. So I like the, 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 the 350 for the range and for all the other stuff that it can do. And then in the same time, I like the two stroke because you know, it's gonna have more ground than the 350. No question about it. You can, you can feel that it's gonna have more ground. So I, in this video, what I'm trying to say maybe is apologize for those people that I keep trashing on their two strokes or um, when I ride other people's bikes, they just, I, I, I just realized this to myself. I just don't fit in them. It's just, it's just an awkward position. So if I'm so comfortable with this bike to ride it properly, you see where I'm going as far as that goes? It's, it's I'm fast on it because I'm used to it. I'm fast on it because I have optimized it with handlebar razors like 1.5 inches and moving the handlebars in the forward position. Like when people get on my bike, they just feel weird. Like what the heck? This riding position is weird. And if you ride my Yamaha and then decide not to buy a Yamaha, it's my fault because I've changed it so much. You get on it and you'll be like, man, this doesn't feel right. But in the same time, I feel the same way when I go on other people's bikes. So it's a toss. But with that being said, if I'll have to buy another bike tomorrow, I would totally get this Yamaha again. I know it's heavier. I know it has a couple of little things here and there. It has a couple of um, you know, like the, 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 the heavier, the no hydraulic, the, you know, all the stuff that people say that it's absolutely amazing, the KTM for, but still no contest. I'll still pick this bike. I wouldn't think twice. I'll pick Team Blue any day. Just for the fact that, look at the reliability that I have on this bike. It was raced, raced, then sold to me. So they sold it to me after it was raced. And then I put, 200 hours on it and I'm still flying on it I haven't done any repairs no valve chat no valve adjusting no nothing so I'm afraid the day that uh, I'll have to do valve adjustment on this bike I'm gonna lose a lot of subscribers because a lot of the people are telling me that I subscribe to the channel just because they're waiting to see how long the valves would last before I have to adjust them because they are thinking about buying this bike and they just want to make sure that you know, they're not buying a lemon. You're gonna need a valve adjustment all the time because the 250 and all 250s are horrible. Well, here I am today, uh, 200 and something hours, and it's still chugging along very nicely. So many water crossings. Oh, that was the wrong gear. Man, so yeah, that's the story with the, 
me and my me and the two stroke drama uh, or any other bike drama because this guy in front of me he rides a, a WR 250F which is the same bike as I do right now and uh, when I get on his bike it feels weird it's the same bike as I have right now really it's just a different kind of like model but same bike and it feels weird because I modified my bike so much that it doesn't feel like a Yamaha anymore it feels great for me it's, it's a little bit of a high handlebars and people say ah you gotta if you raise your handlebars you can turn it easy and you need to cut an inch out of the handlebars bullshit you have to be like such a competition level before that really applies to you that uh, my favorite thing was when I was in Arizona and I was racing this um, C-class winner right that was switching to B-class and uh, I was trying to stay away from the dust as I'm trying to do right now like I'm not really trying really hard to get close and then uh, one part of the trail was like less dusty more rocky so I was like pushing really, really hard and all of a sudden I was riding his his ass and poor Rick was confused because all of a sudden you know I became from from slow to fast and he was like confused and my favorite moment was when we stopped at the burger place and I said bye to him thank you for riding with me and all that stuff and he came over and he looked at the back of my car and he looked at my Yaris and looked at the bike in the back of the Yaris and looked at the bike and he almost couldn't believe that this 254 stroke was racing him all the way on that trail and when it was behind me I don't know because I couldn't hear him he was on a two stroke but when I turned around he was not there like every time he told me let me record you he I was gone in 60 seconds it was just gone so that's the that's the point that I'm, I'm trying to make a you know like that's one of the pleasures of riding this bike it's an awesome trail bike and then I come over here and I could enjoy these trails with, with very very good MPG and it's mild on power and doesn't do unexpected stuff and no stupid range on it like the KTM does and I don't have to buy Electron out of the thing and mix fuel and that's why I chose the four stroke and then if I want to chase a two stroke it just makes it so much more scary for uh, for the people that ride a two stroke and they just cannot understand why is this four stroke guy just right behind me or why I can catch him and this is not the first time it happened and everybody says well it's 80% skill 20% bike and it's true and it's true and that's exactly the point you have a, a, a overall better bike overall not shining at anything but it can do it all instead of a two stroke that just has all the drama that comes with a two stroke you know so for me the choice was easy so I know I, I, I make some people upset when I say this because they think the two stroke is this holy grail but look just marching with one hand up the hill if I have to no unexpected stuff it's just flying it's just flying okay the dust seems to be gone so let me put some uh, some speed on now that we got a nice part whoa stabby stabby stuff over there this is my speed when I feel like riding again. I'm gonna stay behind.